Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's episode because I'm hopefully gonna stop you all from making a very common gardening mistake when it comes to seed starting. So I'm down here, I'm starting seeds, and the next episode after this, we're gonna be starting some more seeds. But I wanted to allot some time to talk about this specific topic at length so that hopefully I could kind of give you all some options when it comes to seed starting containers that are not peat pots. So the topic of this video is why you should not use peat pots. Now, I know that this is going to be not the most popular topic, but I really truly think that this is a topic worth having, uh, or a discussion worth having, and I think it's something that really is uh, kind of, it falls on beginning gardeners more than advanced gardeners, because if you've used peat pots for any length of time, you'll know their shortcomings. The problem is, is that every big box store carries them and right now we have such an influx of new and beginning gardeners that have never really tried their hand at seed starting and they reach for these because they're inexpensive and they seem great because they're biodegradable and the fact that uh, you know, we're trying to be you know, as natural as possible. But let me first say that when it comes to seed starting containers, I don't always go you know, the natural route or the, you know, the ideal route. I go with something that is actually plastic. And I'll get into why in a second. I know that a lot of you are already saying, well, okay, what about some other options? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna explain why I use plastic. Then I'm going to explain some other options that I also really like that are just as good as, you know, as plastic or can be just as good as plastic containers if you use them correctly. It's just, to be honest with you, plastic containers like these cell packs here um, or plug trays, whatever you wanna call them, these, uh, these cell packs here are very inexpensive, they're very lightweight, and they're very forgiving for beginning gardeners, as, you know, as well as an advanced gardener like myself that have been gardening for you know, 10, 15, uh, you know, almost going on 20 years. I've been using plastic because I realized very early on when these came on the market that these sounded great, but are not great in actual, like, in reality. They, in, uh, in theory, they sound great, but in practice, they fall short. Now, why do these fall short? I wanna talk about that first. So, Jiffy Peat Pots are probably one of the most common brand, and I love Jiffy. I think it's a wonderful brand. They do great things, but their peat pots need to go away. Um, and the reason why I say that is because they, um, they're advertised as being biodegradable. And yes, they are biodegradable. They're made from compressed peat. And the problem with compressed peat is it's very absorbent. And one of the biggest issues that you'll see right off the bat is that if you're growing for any length of time indoors, if you're starting your seeds indoors and you're starting them like we are two, two and a half months before your last frost date, the issue is, is all that extra moisture doesn't just go away. It gets held very closely in this peat here. This compressed peat, it's very, very tightly bound. And so it holds onto moisture extremely well. And the problem is, is anytime you have something that is biodegradable and stays wet for a very long time, you probably know what I'm, where I'm going with this. It starts to mold very quickly. It starts to break down. And that's not a bad thing, but you don't want that indoors. Having mold indoors can actually harbor a lot of things, actually can harbor spores inside your house that can cause allergies to flare up. Um, if, you're, you know, if, you're very, um, if you're very allergic to, to mold, I am, and that was one of the things in my grow room that I encountered, is I had a, an oscillating fan. And the problem is, is I had tons of these. I had hundreds of these when I first started using them. And I walked in when they started growing mold, and all of a sudden I started coughing, I started sneezing. I had no clue what was going on. And I figured out really quickly, oh my gosh, these are covered in mold. They're just absolutely covered in mold. And that fan was just basically making it all go airborne. So me being allergic to mold, being very, you know, uh, very sensitive to mold, um, oh my gosh, I had an asthma attack so fast I could hardly blink. So big issue there. Second issue, if you're not even allergic to them, mold can actually cause damage to your plants. Now, uh, plants, they need to be free of mold because mold can actually cause damping off, it can cause root rot, and it, um, the mold that grows on the edges of these pots is a sign that conditions are too wet. That's why if you see mold growing on your, on your seed starting mix, um, or you know, your, your plants are starting to mold and things are starting to turn fuzzy and you're noticing kind of mold just crop up in different areas, it's staying too wet. 
and you need to get that to dry out. Now, uh, that's another massive issue with that is that it doesn't dry out very fast. So I'm gonna stop there because I don't wanna hate on Jiffy peat pots too much. You know, I, I explained why I don't really like them, um, but you know, I, they, they are what they are, okay? So I'm not gonna hate on them forever because uh, I wanna focus on other things that I think are more productive. But why do I like plastic more? So plastic, A, does not mold. B, it actually drains very well. It does not hold on to any moisture in the actual containers itself. It all just, you know, it just drains right through. Compare that to a Jiffy peat pot, and the issue is that everything can hold moisture. Every single thing holds moisture, and yes, they do have a drainage hole, but what good is a drainage hole when pretty much there's probably more water being held in this than is draining out the bottom? So you really have to overwater a peat pot to actually see the excess water. However, in here, because they don't hold on to any water, the water just drains out the bottom very simply. And if you have a catch tray, you can say to yourself, well, I'm clearly overwatering. Or you can use the, the, the bottom water uh, as a water reservoir, like we do. So we have a, this is how we always start seeds. We have a holeless seed tray. We have a tray with some holes. This is the really sturdy one that holds the weight of the, the plants. And then we put our cell pack inside. We always stack our orientation just like that. We've done it for years. That's how we start seeds. And the problem is you cannot take, you cannot bottom water with these peat pots. Because if you do, it's just going to absorb all that water right into the pot. You can't not, you cannot bottom water with peat pots. So that's another thing. Now, the next reason why I love plastic is it's reusable. Now, for those of you that are saying, well, it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's not environmentally friendly. It's, uh, it's a petroleum product. Yes, it is. But you know, pick your poison. I'm reusing these for years. In fact, this is the fourth year that I've used these. I just keep washing them out and um, I put a little bleach in the water um, or a little vinegar uh, if you go that route just to sanitize them, make sure there's no mold spores or any fungus and things left in there, um, any creepy crawlies, bugs and whatnot. I rinse them out really well. We have a video on why it's important to do that and we do that every year. And so I can rinse them out let them air dry, and they're ready to go again next year. So I've been using these for years, the same ones for years, and they're still just as nice as long as you don't crack them and break them. And the next reason why I like them is they're lightweight. You know, there's nothing better, in my opinion, than really lightweight planting materials. If you're lugging around hundreds of plants, plastic is super, super lightweight, and, um, and it's the way to go. Now, another th reason why I love plastic is it's durable. It's really durable. You know, when, when these get wet, they're very spongy and they pretty much just fall apart. Some of the other options that are available to you as a gardener also kind of fall apart and can break apart um, if you are, uh, you know, if you're transporting them. I really love this because you can literally just, when this is full of soil, you can literally just take this and hold it by the, by the plant itself and just swing it around. And so, it's not going to kind of crumble and break because the, the plastic is a pretty, pretty strong barrier there. So the next reason why I like plastic is the fact that um, the plastic actually, uh, it actually helps with root development. So one of the issues that come with these peat pots, again, I'll just use this as an example here. So the peat pots claim to be very good for root development. However, roots actually avoid areas that are very heavily saturated with water and the roots actually avoid that. They avoid those areas because they know that if they are around too much moisture for too long, that they're gonna get root rot. And so they actually don't get good root development in these. It does not allow really good uh, oxygenation of the soil growing medium because of that moisture barrier. Another reason why I really love plastic is because it actually holds on to the right amount of moisture. See, having some moisture is good. Having too much of anything can be a bad thing. And in this case, um, these sometimes can dry out or sometimes they can hold on to too much moisture. Now, uh, they dry out very quickly and that causes you to have to upkeep them very regularly. If you forget, if you skip a day or miss, you know, miss two days or whatever, your plants are bone dry and then they're stressed. The thing that's nice about these, as long as you don't overwater, the plastic kind of holds that moisture in in just the right amount so that, uh, so that the moisture stays in the growing medium, not the actual pot itself. The final reason why I love plastic so much is because it comes in so many different shapes and sizes. So I know that for some plants, I will like to start them in these little six cells here. I like to start them in the six cells 
if they're going to be up potted very quickly. If they're going to be growing there for any length of time, I like to go to a larger pot, something like a three inch or a four inch pot. Now, these Jiffy peat pots here, or any peat pot you find, um, they're going to come in typically two sizes. You're going to get like a three inch pot and you're going to get like a five inch pot. I think they have one other size, but the fact of the matter is they're all fairly large. But if you need versatility, those don't offer versatility. You know, I, I, can't, I can't say anything more about plastic other than the fact that I really enjoy it. And it's the one that I would encourage you guys to use just because it is the most user friendly. And it also is, um, it's the most cost effective as well. You know, if you get 72 cells, uh, I know this is not 72 cells, but if you get a 72 cell tray, imagine having to buy 72 of these suckers. This was $3 or 250 for 10 pots. That's okay. I get this for like 50 cents. So, you know, just, uh, you got to buy them in bulk usually to save a little money, but it's really worth it. Um, so some other reasons or some other things that you could use besides the Jiffy peat pots that do work really well. The first one is I'm going to push you towards Jiffy to another product they have called the Jiffy peat pellets. Now I absolutely love these. There, there's nothing wrong with them except for one tiny thing that we've highlighted in the past. And that's that the netting around the, the little puck when it expands, and those expandable peat pellets, they do have a netting that does not degrade. I don't care what they say, I wish they would fix it. It is one of the biggest issues that I have because if you don't remove it and it says that the roots will grow right through it, I've seen them in the soil, in my soil, in my garden, when I used them in the past for years. I would dig them up all the time and be like, well, it's still there. Or I'd pull the plant up at the end of the season and I would notice that it's still, the plant was just really root bound because the roots didn't actually grow through it like they advertised. So it's good, it's very good as long as you take that off. It just offers a really nice, uh, simple solution and you can get a lot of them for fairly inexpensive. Now, the next uh, solution is uh, another really good one that I actually really like as long as you're not starting seeds indoors for a long period of time and that's because they, they do break down very quickly and that is soil blocks. I love soil blocks and you can actually get you know a big a tray of soil like this and this little uh, contraption, you press down, compress it down, and then you get simply a, a tray, you get a tray like this, and you just ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. I don't know why I'm making sounds. And they drop out, and they come out in these little compressed blocks. Now, if you're growing in them for any length of time, they're gonna start breaking down and, and weathering. That's what happens with soil. So they stay compacted for a little while, but then they do begin breaking down. And I have found in the past when I've used them that the roots from one plant can very easily kind of transfer over and grow into the other soil block. And it kind of can become a mess if you grow on them for a long period of time. So for very short turnaround crops, like if you're just starting a crop very, very quickly and you, you, know, you know you're gonna put it in the ground and you're not gonna be growing it in these trays very long, it's a wonderful option and it can save a ton of money over the period of you know a few years of using it. So, um, and it also doesn't require any plastic at all, other than, you know, if you choose to use a tray like that. So it's another very superior option, but I just thought I would talk about that because it seems like every single day I see people writing into our inbox with, unfortunately, these being used and they're really struggling having results. They're very frustrated because they're just, their plants are weak, their plants are stressed, their plants are, you know, they're either dry or they're overwatered, they're, they're rotting, there's mold, it's just, there's so many different issues and I just, I wanted to highlight that it's not you if you're having the issue. It's just that it's very difficult and it's very unforgiving. Yes, you can have success with them. I'm not saying you can't, but the, the margin for error is so big with them that I'd much rather see you use the other three options that I outlined. And there are other options even more than that. But when it comes to seed starting, those are the big three that I can that I can recommend because I've used those three and they work very well. So plastic is my first favorite. Soil block would be my second favorite because it doesn't have that netting and they come in a variety of different sizes of blocks. And then the peat pellets, the expandable peat pellets would be my third option. So pick which one you like or experiment with all of them and uh, let me know in the comments box below what is your favorite. So I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all on the next episode when we're gonna be starting some seeds. All right, catch you guys later. Bye.